me. <laughs> I love it. Guys, we'll have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time. See ya. And thanks for you for joining us coming up next. Live from Melbourne, this is Nine's Afternoon News with Alicia Loxley. Good afternoon. We begin with the developing situation in Mexico where a powerful 7.1 magnitude earthquake has hit near the capital, bringing down dozens of buildings. The death toll is currently at 224 and rising. Rescue is now racing the clock to find survivors buried in the rubble. This report from ABC America. Tonight, the scramble to unearth victims entombed by that quake. So powerful, it pulverized buildings. One woman covered in dust carried through the crowd on a stretcher. Rescue workers racing into this badly damaged building, rushing this woman to safety. And from the air, it's easy to spot the devastation. Officials saying more than two dozen buildings collapsed, including schools. The massive 7.1 quake striking just after 1 p.m., less than 100 miles from the capital, Mexico City. Population, nearly 9 million. In this newsroom, overhead lights swinging like pendulums. Parts of the ceiling crashing down, workers fleeing. One man steadying himself against the wall. Lights also swinging at this restaurant in Mexico City's airport. Tourists ducking for cover under a table. Thousands rushing to the safety of the street. It was horrible, this man says. Outside, structures collapsing. Dust clogging the air so thick you can barely see anything. I pray that nobody's in here. Residents seen trying to secure a billboard that landed on top of one of those collapsed buildings. We just lost the building Mexico City. Windows crashing to the sidewalk, streets littered with crumbling facades. This car destroyed 250 miles away in Mexico City. It was 32 years ago today in which an 8.0 magnitude quake flattened parts of Mexico, killing thousands in 1985. Tonight, as the country begins to assess the earthquake's toll, more than 100 dead, millions without electricity, the airport's operation suspended. This cracked pavement, just one of the region's many scars. A homeless ice addict who stabbed two strangers has been jailed for 14 years. John Samuel Thackeray attacked two men outside their South Yarra homes in March and July last year. Both victims were lucky to survive the attacks, with one man still walking with a limp. And we will have more from our court reporter, Jade Vincent, a bit later on in the bulletin. The Homicide Squad has released haunting CCTV of a 21-year-old's final moments before his murder in Melbourne's northern suburbs. As crime reporter Alexis Daesh tells us, there's a manhunt underway for those responsible. Homicide detectives themselves have described CCTV footage that they've released as distressing. It shows the chilling moments that two armed killers chase their victim some 250 metres down the street before shooting him dead here in Roxburgh Park. The 21-year-old victim, Anwar Teriyaki, had just arrived home after a night out with friends and as he walked from his car to his family home in Coronet Avenue, two armed men confronted him and started chasing him. Cameras on a nearby house captured those terrifying moments. He flees around a corner and the pair isn't far behind. At one point, the victim pulls down rubbish bins desperately, trying to create some distance between him and his attackers. They appear to be brandishing knives in the footage and tragically, Teriyaki's attempt to escape failed. Within about a minute, the assailants shot the young man dead in a nearby street. The Homicide Squad today released footage in the hope that someone knows who these men are. Police say the victim is from a good family who's been left devastated by their loss. They're grieving. Um, they're devastated by the loss of their son and their brother. They have no knowledge as to anyone that would want to harm Anwar. Now, those cameras also captured a silver sedan that was following both the attackers and the victim during the foot chase. Today, police revealed that that sedan was found later burnt out. It was uh, reported to be on fire only one hour after the killing in Reservoir. Now, police have told us that inside that partially burnt out car, they found several items of interest and they believe that the killers are indeed linked to that silver sedan. We suspect this sedan was laying in wait in the vicinity of Anwar's address 
for up to 40 minutes prior to his arrival, has dropped off the assailants and then later collected them. Now, this unsolved murder took place just after 12.30 in the morning on the 9th of August. So, of course, if anyone has any information at all, they should contact Crime Stoppers. A historic day for euthanasia campaigners here in Victoria with proposed legislation to legalise assisted dying introduced to state parliament. Dougal Beatty joins me now. Dougal, what happens from here? Well, Alicia, the bill is set to be debated over the next couple of weeks in parliament and government hopes it will be passed before the end of the year. Now, it's